everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Adoptions from the Heart TV. I'm your host, Amanda Alberti. Today, we're going to be meeting a woman named Samantha. Samantha's mother placed three children for adoption through Adoptions from the Heart, and Samantha is going to share her experience of what it's like to have half-siblings who were placed for adoption. Thanks so much, Samantha, for taking the time out to come and talk to us about a little bit about who you are and what your story looks like with regards to adoption. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I thought it was really good to have you come because you have a very unique story, right? Um, yes. So do you mind telling us how old you are? I'm 21. You're 21, yes. okay. So, and your mom, mm -hmm. um, Lisa, actually um, had children after you, correct? Yes. And she ended up placing them for adoption. Yes, I'm the first child. You're the first child, yes. okay. So she ended up placing a child right after you, um, about a year later, yeah. and then two years after that, and then I think it's three years after that. Mm -hmm. So you have three half siblings that were placed for adoption. Do you remember when you found out that you had other siblings out there? Do you, rem do you remember kind of how old you are or? I was young, I probably was, like between like seven to ten, I would say. When you kind of really grasped the concept? Maybe like, like, all right, so I, cause I met JC, my sister, when I was younger, like around that time period. Okay. Seven to ten, and then I met Clayton as well when I was younger. Okay. I believe, but I don't remember us like having a picture. I have like a picture of when JC was at the mall, the Christian mall. Oh, okay. So you have a picture of you and JC when you yeah. guys were younger. Yeah. Okay, but none of Clayton and you. Um, not that I could recall. Oh, okay. so you kind of spirit it right into the fact that you have had a little bit of contact yeah. with those two, right? Mm -hmm. And then. Um, the last time you had contact with them, was that only the second kind of visit that you've had? When we met at the picnic? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was the second time, I believe so. How do you feel about having these siblings that are out there that you really don't have much of a connection to? Like, how does it feel for you to be that first child, firstborn, and you have younger siblings that are out there? You know, I wanted to, like, reach out and you know, meet them before I got pregnant and then I got pregnant. So it's kind of like, you know, not like a step back, but at the same time, you know what I mean. But um, Well, now you're a busy mom, yeah. right? Yeah. But I still would like to be proactive and multitask, which I can. And mm -hmm. I just need to do that and reach out or just do something. Because, um, you know, I would like to meet my sister now. We're all grown. We're getting grown. We're getting grown. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, I just feel like to talk to them and just, like, kind of, like, see where their head at is in life. And, like, I don't know. Like, at the same time, I feel like I should just take it slow because I am the child that was kept. Like, I don't know if any of my siblings feel some type way about being put up for adoption, you mm -hmm. know? So... I feel like I'm kind of looked at too, like, oh, you were cat was so like perfect about you kind of type thing. Okay. So I try to look at it from like all point of views, but mm -hmm. I don't really know what their point of views are. Okay. So like, I would just like to, like, I would just like to. Those are questions that you can ask too, yeah. you know, when you get to know them a little bit better. Yeah. We do this, uh, we have a video that we watch during one of our educational classes and it's very interesting because it's adoptees talking mm -hmm. and kind of a similar situation where the adoptee has other, she has other siblings that were kept, you know, that, that her birth parents are parenting and she was placed for adoption. And so her thought process was, um, kind of similar to what you just said with yeah. respect to like how would they feel with me because I was kept I was parented and they were placed and um, it was funny because the person who does the interview was um, Angela Tucker and she said well I think that's interesting because most people would think it would be the reverse like mm -hmm. oh you're lucky that you got adopted and not you know well I've the same way you know there's stuff behind closed doors and just stuff I gotta put up with and feel as though I'm responsible for and mm -hmm. sometimes I feel like the parent um, so 
it's like, you know, I'm not gonna say I wish I was adopted or put up for adoption, but you know, I Have you ever thought of like what life would be like if your situation was different, maybe? Yeah, maybe, but I know the people who get put up for adoption or like been in adoption for a long time, like it's not always as good as how it looks sometimes, you know, but some people Everybody everybody's situation parents, is a little different. Yeah. Um, That's but you just want to make that connection at this point because I remember when we all met at the picnic I feel like you guys exchanged like email addresses or something relative to that right? I remember asking you at the picnic if like everybody here was for a specific reason and you said yes and, you know we were there um, but I would really like to meet my sister okay. it's been lonely oh <laughs> it's okay. been lonely yeah. like my whole life and you want to feel that sibling not, kind of bond. Yeah, not having a sibling and right. just like family, like it's not like really close, like mm -hmm. people are weird. So that's, yeah, like my family's weird on both sides. So it's just like, I've never had like- That connection. A connection or like close connection with like a family member or anything. So I would love to get to know my sister more and just see how she thinks like her side of view of things and clicking. And so we have, a, we have a little bit of a new development because the child that was closest in age to you right after you, Ryan, yeah. um, he just uh, visited with your mom recently, yeah. like about a month ago. Um, and so that's a new development. And so are you excited to kind of build that relationship? You've started to talk to him, right? Yeah, I talked to him on the phone. I said, okay, I'm just like, you know, I'm nervous as hell right now. Like, <laughs> For real, like my teeth were like chattering and oh, everything. Like I was okay. shivering, like I was just scared, like I was nervous. And yeah, cause, I, cause I'm just scared. Cause I don't want to say something wrong. And I said, well, here goes mom. And I felt bad. I'm like, like, why did I call her mom? And that's not his mom. So I just like, I'm like, sorry. And like, you know. He was like, probably like real cool about it though. He like was he just cool like, about no. it. So I'm like, all right, you're a cool bean and I like you so. I, I like need, it. I need, I need to see you in person, and we should have a conversation. But now we were on the phone for like about an hour or two. He's real That's talkative good. and open to talking. Remember that your feelings are your feelings. Yeah. So like, you can own the fact that you might not say all the right things because this is a new relationship, a new avenue for everybody. Mm -hmm. So like, don't, but don't feel really bad. Like you're not doing anything out of spite. Like you just may stu say stuff differently, yeah. you know, and it'll be okay. Okay, and another thing is, I'm just kind of scared that if I reach out, I won't hear anything back. That's kind of how I feel too. Yeah. Like I know I could reach out to Clayton probably and hear something back, mm -hmm. and um, Ryan, but I just I don't know. I want to reach out to my sister too. Right. And see her, cause I don't know. I feel like she hasn't really been involved in any of like the little activities we're trying to right. form here, you know, cause mom, Clayton and Ryan, and now mom wants like me to be included too, in a way. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to like plan something like that. And I just feel like- It just might take some time. Yeah. And you know, the worst thing that happen is it'll be the same way that it is right now, which you don't have any contact. Mm -hmm. But what happens if you do reach out and then you may gain that contact and then that'll be awesome. Yeah. So it won't hurt you. you. You'll be in either the same spot or you'll be in a much better position. Yeah. So you just kind of have to like take that leap of faith and just do it. Yeah. You know, like you said, you all have, you're an adult, you know, everybody's kind of grown up and everybody's almost an adult now. Yeah. So you guys can have this different relationship moving forward without your mom, without us as an agency, like just you guys developing your relationship together. Okay. You know, so. Yeah, it takes time. It does. Well, thanks so much, Samantha, for coming in, kind of telling a little bit about your story, how you feel about things. I think it's really great perspective to have, like, you know, because we have lots of situations where, you know, birth parents do parent children either before or after sometimes they make an adoption plan. Yeah. So thank you for taking your time. You're welcome, thank you for having me. Thank you so much to both Danielle and Samantha for sharing what it's like to be a child who has siblings who are placed for adoption. Oftentimes that's forgotten about. People don't realize that women have other children that are also a piece to the adoption as a whole. So thank you so much guys and tune in next week.